Hey, glad you could join me. Welcome to Axial GT. Today, let's look at the generational improvements that the Ryzen 5 series has made, namely the Ryzen 5 1600, 2600, and 3600. For this comparison, we'll be excluding APUs and the X variant of the Ryzen 5 and provide a direct comparison of the six core 12 thread chips. So first, let's take a look at clocks. First up, we have the Ryzen 5 1600, the first Zen architecture on 14 nanometer. It has a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz and a boost of 3.6, three megabytes of L2 cache and 16 megabytes of L3 cache. Next, we have the second gen Zen Plus architecture on 12 nanometer of the Ryzen 5 2600. It has a base clock of 3.4 GHz and a boost of 3.9 with the same L2 and L3 cache. And finally we have the new Ryzen 5 3600 Zen 2 on the 7 nanometer node. It's pushing the base clock to 3.6 GHz with a boost up to 4.2. The chip also keeps the same 3 megabytes of L2 cache but doubles the amount of the L3 cache to 32 megabytes. We'll discuss why this is important in a minute. In AMD's chiplet design, it constitutes eight cores per chiplet. For an example, in the case of the 3600, it's one chiplet with two cores disabled. AMD accomplishes this with the binning process. The chiplet started its life as an eight core chip, but through manufacturing flaws, two of the eight cores did not live up to AMD's quality control specifications. So what started out as an eight core chiplet is now a six core chip. Then the clocks are tested and either a 3600 or a 3600X is born. Now this is a simplified summary of how the binning process works, but it gives you a good grasp on the basics. So let's go ahead and jump into some benchmarks. First, we'll take a look at Cinebench R20. As you can see in single core, the 1600 scores a 338, the 2600 a 379, and the 3600 a 480. When going from a 1600 to a 2600, that's a 12% performance increase. And when going from the 2600 to the 3600, that's a 26% increase. Of course, the biggest jump we'll see is the R5 1600 versus the R5 3600 which is a whopping 42% increase in performance. Now we'll look at multi-core. And as you can see, it's pretty close to the same percentage increases. But worthy of note here is the almost 45% increase from the 1600 to the 3600. Now let's get into some gaming benchmarks. First up, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 1080p, very high settings. While we see only a 6.8% increase in between the 1600 and 2600, there is a huge leap in between the 2600 and 3600. This is mainly for three reasons. Increased IPC on the 7 nanometer node, increased clock speeds, plus the larger L3 cache that I mentioned earlier. The larger cache helps with latency since the CPU has more room to store the most used instructions close to the CPU cores. Our next benchmark is Battlefield 5, 1080p on ultra settings. In this game, we see more of the same. A small increase in between the 1600 and the 2600, with a large leap in between the 2600 and the 3600, plus the huge gain in going in between the 1600 and 3600. Now we've arrived at Far Cry New Dawn, 1080p ultra settings. As you can see, the 2600 has a 9.5% increase over the 1600, and the 3600 has an 11.5% increase over the 2600. And we can't forget about the 22% gain in between the R5 1600 and the R5 3600. Now here we have Total War Warhammer 2, 1080p highest settings. I will admit I was thrown off by this one. The gains are spread across all the chips of the series, including the massive, almost 55% gain between the 1600 and 3600. Now we've come to Final Fantasy 15, 
with the 1600 scoring a 101, the 2600 a 113, and the 3600 up to a 134. And with the percentage increases pretty much staying in line from what we've seen previously. And lastly we'll look at times by. With the 2600 providing a 13% increase over the 1600 and the 3600 providing a 16.5% increase over the 2600. And of course we can't forget the massive 31.7% increase that the 3600 provides us over the 1600. So as we look at price to performance, using August 2019 prices and using the 1600 as a baseline, I've averaged all the scores together to give you a good diving off point. Now, being more focused on budget gaming and getting more bang for your buck, all these processors are an excellent choice. You really can't go wrong. It all depends on your budget and what you're shooting for. But, if I was building a gaming rig from scratch right now, I would probably choose the Ryzen 5 2600. Even with it being the last gen CPU, it is still a very capable processor, and especially with its $135 price tag. Now if I already had a 1600 or 2600, would I upgrade? And the answer is no. I'd probably wait for the next gen, and probably last gen, for the AM4 socket, as it will surely be a refresh of the Zen 2 architecture, and squeeze the last little bit out of AM4 processors. And my reasoning for this is simple. If I was struggling to hit 60 to 70 frames per second in games at 1080p, it's time to upgrade. But all three of these chips on average shoot well past that. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe for future content. Until next time, I'm out of here. You all have a good one.